Welcome to the House of Hypertrophy. What are the most effective and efficient exercises to maximize quadriceps hypertrophy? The findings of a brand new study have some potentially important details. It has compared two different leg extension variations. Some of you may be thinking, why leg extensions? Aren't squats and leg press variations the best way to grow the quads? As we'll see later, these exercises absolutely can grow the quads well but they aren't enough because they fail to meaningfully grow a certain head of the quad. Leg extensions, on the other hand, have been documented to grow all four heads of the quads well, especially the region that squats and leg presses minimally grow. We'll also mention some underappreciated alternatives to leg extensions if you can't train them. 22 untrained men were recruited. With one leg, subjects trained the typical leg extension, the hips were flexed at 90 degrees and they moved the knee joint from 110 to 0 degrees. With the other leg, they trained the leg extension with a hip flexed to 40 degrees, with a knee joint also moving from 110 to 0 degrees. So the only difference was this variation has us leaning back. The subjects trained both exercises with these variables. Whenever subjects reached 20 reps on the first set, load was increased to keep them in the 15 to 20 rep range. The fact each subject trained with both exercises was great, since this means the same subjects were in both conditions. Therefore, differences in genetics, nutrition, and outside lifestyle factors likely won't confound the study. The quadriceps consist of four heads, and the researchers measured both rectus femoris and vastus lateralis growth each at an upper and lower region. The result? Rectus femoris growth at both regions was 1.4 to 2.7 times greater with a 40 degree hip flex leg extension. How on earth is this possible? The rectus femoris is what we call a two joint muscle. It crosses both the hip and knee joints. So besides contributing to knee extension, it also contributes to hip flexion. Consequently, with the leg extension, leaning back allows us to lengthen the rectus femoris more, that is, it's in a relatively more stretched position. This is important. As mentioned previously at the House of Hypertrophy, training muscles at longer lengths seems to build more muscle, and this new study adds to this body of literature, with the rectus femoris growing better with a leg extension variation that positions it at a longer length. The other three quad heads are one joint since they just crossed the knee, so all contribute to just knee extension. So provided we're moving the knee joint through the same range of motion, which was done in this study, we'd expect these muscles to grow similarly between both variations as they're moving through the same muscle lengths. Indeed, vastus lateralis growth at both regions was fairly similar between the two leg extension variations. There are at least three questions you might have. The subjects were previously untrained. What about trained people? What about laying down to zero degrees of hip flexion? And what about alternatives to leaning back leg extensions? A paper from Japan published last year potentially answers the first two questions. Nine bodybuilders were recruited. They performed the leg extension with 0, 40, and 80 degrees of hip flexion. During each, muscle activation was indirectly measured with MRI. Both the 0 and 40 degree hip flexion leg extensions produced higher upper and middle rectus femoris activity than the 80 degree variation. Lower rectus femoris activity did not statistically differ between them, but we still see the values tended to be higher with the 0 and 40 degree variations. Therefore, this study suggests trained individuals might also benefit from leaning back leg extensions, but there doesn't seem to be a greater benefit for 0 degrees compared to 40 degrees of hip flexion. If anything, the raw numbers favor the 40 degree variation. However, I will note that although this muscle activation measurement has been associated with actual muscle growth in previous analyses, the context of these papers are important. None of these papers verified that this muscle activation measurement successfully predicted muscle growth when comparing exercises at different muscle lengths, and I think it's possible this measurement fails to fully account for passive forces that occur when a muscle is at longer lengths. I say this to say it's possible these results underestimate the muscle growth potential of zero degree hip flexion leg extensions. Thus, Hopefully we get research comparing the 0 to 40 degree variations. For now, we can at least say it's likely both 0 and 40 degree hip flexion leg extensions are better than a traditional variation for overall rectus femoris development. But what if you can't perform leaning back leg extensions? 
The Reverse Nordic Curl and City Squat are both potentially great alternatives. Both are performed with virtually no hip flexion, just like the zero degree hip flexion leg extension. But unlike the zero degree hip flexion leg extension, both of the exercises allow us to bend our knees to an even greater degree of flexion. So in addition to lengthening the rectus femoris even more, all other three quad heads are going to be trained at even longer muscle lengths than what we achieve with leg extensions. Does this mean these two exercises can grow these three quad heads even more than any leg extension variation? Maybe, but it is also possible that there's a threshold to the amount of muscle lengthening that's beneficial for growth, such that these two exercises don't build the three quad heads more than any leg extension variation. There are also some other subtle differences between these exercises. Hopefully future research compares them to tease out any potential differences in growth. For now at least, I believe we can hypothesize both of these are going to be excellent alternatives for growing the quads, particularly the rectus femoris. Depending on your current level, these two exercises may be too hard or easy to perform, but I've mentioned some training and progression tips in a pinned comment if you're interested. This discussion so far has been centered around maximizing muscle hypertrophy, but I will say if you'd just rather train with normal leg extensions, that is perfectly fine. At the end of the day, although it may not be the biggest bang for your buck, it still will build muscle. The exercises mentioned so far largely involved isolated knee extension, but the quads are commonly trained with combined knee and hip extension exercises. We have multiple studies suggesting all of these exercises likely minimally grow the rectus femoris, but develop the other vastus muscles well. The lack of rectus femoris growth from these exercises can likely be explained by the simple fact the rectus femoris is a two-joint muscle. During the bottom position of any combined knee and hip extension exercise, we need to produce both knee extension and hip extension. But since the rectus femoris is involved in hip flexion, the opposite of hip extension, a strong contraction would fight against us trying to get up. The other vastus muscles are just involved in knee extension, so are free to highly contribute to knee extension in these exercises. So it makes sense these grow well from these exercises. Some of you may be wondering, the leg extension also still grows the vastus muscles. How does this growth compare to that achieved from combined knee and hip extension exercises? Most of the electromyographic analyses I found comparing leg extensions to squats, lunges, or leg presses showed that the latter exercises elicited higher activity of the various vastus muscles. Now, as mentioned at the House of Hypertrophy previously, electromyographic studies have limitations, but as described by researcher Brad Schoenfeld, there seems to be an upcoming study finding when comparing leg extensions to leg presses, leg presses grew the vastus lateralis better. And that the leg extension targets the rectus femoris, mm -hmm. which is the um, mid, point, the mid quad muscle, the yep. muscle that goes down the center of the quad, and the vastus lateralis, one of those three vastus muscles, the lateralis is on the lateral aspect of the quad, was targeted to a greater extent with the leg press. Some degree of upper to lower regional differences could exist. This study compared Smith machine squat to leg extension training in trained subjects. Unsurprisingly, the leg extensions grew the rectus femoris more, especially at the lower region. As a note, based on the data we've seen, we can hypothesize if leaning back leg extensions were performed, much better upper and middle rectus femoris growth would have been seen. Vastus lateralis growth at the upper and middle portions tended to be better with the Smith machine squats, while growth at the lower portion fascinatingly favored the leg extensions. I should note there were a couple of limitations with this study, so I would like to see another study like this. But in total, the available evidence leans towards the idea that growth of the vastus muscles, at least in certain regions, can be better with combined knee and hip extension exercises. So to maximize overall quad growth, having both an isolated knee extension and combined knee and hip extension exercise is probably a great idea. We'll have future videos at the House of Hypertrophy exploring and comparing different squat, leg press, and lunge variations, so stay tuned for that. Considering the conflicting information across the web, things can get pretty confusing about how you may want to train. I hope the videos at the House of Hypertrophy go some way to clearing up this confusion, but our high-quality partner, the Alpha Progression app, may also assist you. 
An extremely well-designed plan generator can help you generate an evidence-based muscle building program 100% tailored to your needs. This can take you less than the time you take to brush your teeth. There are over a quadrillion input combinations on which your plan is based, and you can still personalize things. During workouts, the app analyzes your performance and suggests how you may progress to sustain muscle gains. Graphs display your long-term progress, and there's a huge exercise database of some of the best muscle building movements with simple video and text instructions. Try out all the premium features free for two weeks with a link in the description and comments. And if you like it and choose to go beyond, the link gives you 20% off a subscription. Thank you for making it to the end of the video. Here's the summary points. Feel free to check out the Alpha Progression app or our recent deep dive into building the triceps.